the poorer the country and the poorer the family, the more the bigger percentage they spend of their budget on food. So as food goes up, it's a relative price increase. Uh, in, and we see now more and more countries where food is going up faster than the CPI. And so you, you could quantify that and just say that's going to add to poverty. Uh, that adds to fragility in some of the, some of the countries facing that. Um, that, and so uh, countries can respond to that uh, by enabling their farmers. I've been advocating that the advanced economies open their markets more, recognize that this is a moment to make friends, uh, to, uh, to help uh, people that, are, that uh, don't have as much. Uh, and that means really looking at all your trade barriers, all your blockages, uh, all your subsidies for things that aren't really necessary and cut them back so that there can be more, more room. Uh, this goes also into the fiscal policies and the monetary policies where it's really important uh, that, that there be a, uh, a reduction in the accommodation. The, the accommodation is, is, it turned out to be inflationary. And so as that's reduced, do it in a way that enables production and supply. Uh, that means differences in how you, know, you were shifting from demand stimulus, which was the accommodation policy, to now re removing that accommodation. And unfortunately, it's been primarily higher interest rates. That is, is dead focus, is exactly focused on the poor countries, smaller businesses, ones that rely on floating interest rate debt, uh, which, uh, which adds to the pressure from the food price spike.